Next up, we have the medical director of Fossil, Misfit. So, okay, both. Matthew Diamond. Yes. And you're also a practicing physician. Correct. At NYU, or? I, I am on the faculty at NYU, but okay. my practice is in San Francisco. Okay, please welcome Matthew. Thank you, Leon. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Can everyone hear me uh, in the back? Yes? Okay, great. So it's, it's great to be here. And uh, I want to thank Lee for inviting me to share my perspective. Um, it's a pleasure to be in a community of folks who have uh, thought deeply about wellness in a holistic way and, and about how to, uh, to reach uh, a broad audience um, with that understanding. Um, I am uh, the medical director at, um, have been at Misfit and uh, now at Fossil. Uh, at Misfit, we've been developing physical activity and sleep monitoring wearables for about five years. And um, about nine months ago, we were acquired by uh, Fossil Group, which is the fashion company, one of the largest manufacturers of watches and accessories uh, in the world. Uh, at Misfit, uh, we took design very seriously and put a lot of effort into creating devices that promoted a healthier lifestyle without getting in the way of your life. And at Fossil, uh, we're excited to have the opportunity to, to take that to the next level. As Lee mentioned, um, I am a practicing physician, and my specialty is sports medicine. And I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about my work uh, with patients because I think it is very relevant for our discussion today. Um, I take care of folks, and, and you see here, um, in all fairness, the picture on the left is, is, from the, um, is from the Matrix, the film. That's Neo being rehabilitated with uh, electrostimulation. Um, actually, it was great to have Izzy's talk before uh, this one, um, stimulating muscles and nerves uh, that were clearly atrophied um, in, this, uh, in this patient. But when I do it, it looks more like uh, the patient on the right. Um, I am certified in a contemporary form of medical acupuncture, and I use needles with electricity uh, with a modern understanding of neuroanatomy to stimulate some of the same nerves uh, that Izzy does if I'm working in the, in the head and neck or elsewhere in the body. Um, when patients come to see me, it's important that I just don't focus on the physical problem. Um, after an injury like this, often their entire autonomic nervous system is activated. And for someone to heal any injury, it's really important um, to dampen their sympathetic nervous system and to promote um, a healing response, which is dominated by their uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So I thought it's worth uh, putting this one slide, a little bit of biology, to reinforce the fact that we have an autonomic nervous system that is taking care of us all the time. And how we feel throughout the day in a moment-to-moment -moment experience uh, is significantly determined by the balance of uh, whether it's our uh, fight or flight response or our rest and relaxation response uh, that's dominating our experience. And um, every one of those parts of the body that's shown in that figure has, a, um, has an expression that is distinct whether one system is dominating or another system is dominating. Uh, so with technology, we're able to pick up on uh, where we are uh, with our nervous system, which is a reflection of where we are uh, within our emotional state. So I want to spend the next few minutes um, talking about mindfulness and technology. And it's a broad topic, and it's relevant to a lot of uh, the talks uh, today and yesterday. Um, there's a lot of press about the fact that, you know, with mobile technology, all of us on our phones, on our computers, um, you know, uh, is this distracting us from the present moment? Is the uh, modern technology that we depend on, uh, does it take us away from actually having real experiences with other people and, in fact, with ourselves? And I wanted to um, rely on Steve Jobs here to describe mindfulness in part as a demonstration 
that the iPhone is not in conflict uh, with being a mindful person. And in fact, its creator um, elegantly described how he used mindfulness um, to, uh, to essentially uh, improve his own uh, innovation and his own understanding. Um, mindfulness is a term that's used a lot. So I thought it's helpful to actually uh, define how I'm going to use it uh, today. And I'll read the definition here, as you can see on the screen. Uh, it's an important component of psychological well-being, this hyper well-being that we're talking about uh, at this conference. It's an awareness of moment-to-moment -moment experience. It emerges through paying attention on purpose to the present moment non-judgmentally. And this is mostly taken from John Kabat-Zinn's uh, definition of mindfulness uh, with some minor edits. And I'd be happy to answer questions about, uh, you know, each of the words in this definition is chosen for um, a reason. Uh, that's the mindfulness that we're talking about today. So the question is, what can, mindful, what can wearables do uh, to either contribute or take away from our own experience um, of mindfulness? Um, are wearables the technology that's going to uh, you know, bridge a gap in the technology up until today um, to, to give us a, a more uh, meaningful and a more enriched experience with technology? So I think there are some great examples of technology, some of which are presented at this conference, uh, like Spire, that use biofeedback that are specifically designed um, to detect and coach the user um, to, uh, to regulate their own nervous system and their own emotional state. Um, you may have heard uh, from Rhythm at this conference, another biofeedback bio tool to help you sleep better. And we just heard from Izzy um, talking to us about Think. I think it's a great product. I just uh, I'll let uh, the creators of those products speak for themselves, but I wanted to um, highlight a few products that I'm a fan of that I think are doing a great job in um, really understanding the connection between technology, the nervous system, the emotional state, um, and promoting well-being. But I also want to tell another story about technology. Uh, I was recently uh, listening to um, the story of the uh, Stratus Jump, sponsored by Red Bull where, I don't know if you've heard about this, uh, the, the, the largest free fall um, in history that happened a few years ago, um, an amazing feat of technology and physiology. And this jumper uh, was monitored in every way that you could imagine. Um, I spoke with the physician that was monitoring those vital signs. And um, you know they very accurately knew their heart rate, um, their respiratory rate, um, really specific uh, metrics. But what they said is, you know, I think we missed something because our participant in this study had a nervous breakdown actually twice during the training. So all of those metrics and all those numbers and all the wearables that this person was uh, using didn't capture the holistic idea of well-being that I think that all of us are after um, at this conference. What I want to focus on today is not the wearables that are um, wholly devoted to creating a mindful existence and um, an emotionally uh, meaningful uh, existence. It's about what about everyday technology and how can we use mindfulness to inform our relationship with it. And I have the example here of the telephone. I could think of no better person to inform that uh, discussion than uh, the Buddhist um, monk, the Vietnamese monk Thich Nhat Hanh. And I normally wouldn't read word for word um, from a slide, but I think it's worth doing that in this case because he chose what he was saying here very carefully. He was describing how they answered the phone at his retreat center in the south of France called Plum Village. And I spent a week there. It was a great experience. Um, everyone had to have phone duty there. And you can imagine it's a place where people don't use computers, don't use phones while they're there. Um, but somebody has to answer the phone. 
he gave them very specific instructions about how he wanted them to answer the phone. So what he said is that the sound of the telephone at Plum Village doesn't irritate them anymore. They consider it to be a bell of mindfulness. When the first sound is heard, in other words, when the phone rings for the first time, he asks folks there to stop talking, stop thinking, and just enjoy the breath, the in-breath and the out-breath, um, and to smile. When the telephone rings for the second time, still breathe, smile, enjoy. He said, don't worry. If the other person has something really important to say, they won't hang up after that second ring. And when the third sound is heard, that's when you should stand up, walk in the direction of the phone, but do it calmly, breathing, smiling. Don't go like a rabbit. He said, make each step like the steps of a lion, very firm, very stable. You're breathing in, calming, and breathing out. This is the joy of meditation, nourishing you with the elements of stability and peace. When you pick up the phone, it's reflected in your voice. This was decades ago, right? He was, um, he was talking about how disruptive a normal telephone was to a mindful existence. He goes on, and I don't think I'll read this, um, just to, to talk about how, um, how technology can help us to be more mindful. What would he say today um, in a world where we all have phones, we're on them a good portion of the time, uh, let's put this into perspective of uh, what we've seen, uh, revolutions in computing, right? The, the 90s revolution of the internet, the emergence of uh, mobile, and now an emergence of the internet of things, including wearables. I see this as a, an evolution in wearable technology where uh, finally technology that brought us slumped over a desk can bring us again standing up walking, being healthy, and getting back in touch with our emotional state. This evolution of wearables includes a lot more functionality that I think you'll see. And I think Izzy also talked about, you know, we're getting better data now with wearables. We're also able to do more things. And as wearables interact with the Internet of Things, um, you know, we're able to unlock our house, uh, control parts of our house, um, you know, safety, um, and, and uh, more uh, useful controls, um, I think, are, are present and are coming to the world of wearables. At Fossil, we really see um, the wrist and specifically the watch as a really important hub in controlling all these things. The question is, do we all want to wear screens on our wrist? Do we want how do we want to interact with technology? And um, you know, I, many of us here are creating technologies. I think it's a really important question. Um, you know, we're dealing with issues of data security, data privacy. I think just as important as those issues is to understand how does the technology that we're creating change the way that um, we exist moment to moment and interact with each other. Uh, one thing that we're doing at Fossil and this is throughout our portfolio of licensed brands, is uh, to create a smartwatch with a lot of the functionality that will help you to live a healthier life and an easier life and to spend the time doing what you'd like to do without taking you out of the moment. This is uh, just two watches that we've launched in the last uh, month or so um, on two of our brands. Um, these hybrid smartwatches essentially look like a fashion watch, uh, but they have the functionality um, inside of um, sensors, uh, Bluetooth communication, um, and uh, we really feel like this has the potential to enable uh, folks with technology without disabling them by distracting them from the moment. So I think that uh, that's where I'm going to leave this talk for today. Um, I think it's, it's uh, incumbent on us as technologists uh, to think about these issues and to make sure um, that we're promoting hyper well-being rather than taking away from it. Last thing to mention is that um, we are looking for folks to join the team. 
um, at Fossil, uh, firmware engineers, algorithm engineers, and uh, scientists in general. If you'd like to talk more about uh, our work, feel free to email me or, or talk to me afterwards. Thanks. Thank you very much sure. for the, the talk. Maybe uh, if we have one question, and we can do it in 30 seconds, we do it. Any questions? OK, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hi.